Hey, hey, and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about endometriosis and ancestral healing. And it's something I did. And I know that for many girls, that might be actually the missing puzzle that can help you from a uh, healing and prevent you from uh, healing fully. That's why I thought it's going to be uh, good to talk about and it's going to be very, very honest video because I'm going to share a lot of private things as well as a lot of uh, scientific research. Okay, so you have to know that there are genetic factors that contribute to the risk of developing endometriosis. It's very likely that endometriosis runs in the families. It's inherited. What that means? Uh, in, uh, sciences is inherited uh, in our polygenic um, um, multifunctional mode. It means that women who have a mother, sister or daughter with this disease are in the higher risk of uh, having endometriosis themselves. And you might think, but I don't have any uh, mother or a sister and no one from my family had endometriosis except me. And you have to look at this in the bigger picture because not only endometriosis is inherited, but also all women kind of problems runs in the family. And what I'm saying about that, genetic found to, uh, to influence menstrual cramps severity. It means that there was the study conducted by um, the 23andMe, which is a, like a, a website that uh, do the DNA tests. They basically conduct the studies that uh, proved that the woman who had very long and very heavy menstrual cycles uh, somehow passed it to their daughters. So even if the daughter is um, completely healthy and might start with healthy periods, if her mother is constantly complaining about the period, oh my God, this is how it is uh, to be a woman. Oh, you just wait when you grow up. We women have to suffer that much. Like my mother complained like that. And then no wonder I got, you know, heavy period because what the small child see, the small child do. And a lot of things are um, influenced to us on the epigenetic level. If you don't know what epigenetic is, stay with me in this video because it is absolutely mind blowing, okay? So epigenetic basically is the study of changes in organism caused by modification of a gene expression rather than uh, alteration of the co genetic code itself. So it's mean epigenetic proof that you can influence your genes by doing things differently and by stimulating different um, different surroundings. So basically by changing the surroundings, you can influence the genes. You can influence the growth of the neurons in the developing brain, as well as modify the activity of neurons in the adult brain. Uh, endo is the disease of the cells. If you can influence the cells, which epigenetic proves, that means you can influence them to behave in certain way. You cannot change your genetic code, but you can influence your genes to act in certain way, which was very hopeful. And that was make me literally hook on epigenetics. And I started studying and I started going deeper and deeper what that means for me. You know, can I reverse it? Can I uh, influence my genes? Can I do something about it? And now this is the very important thing. There is the link between endometriosis and childhood abuse. Uh, that was uh, literally proved by the Harvard University, and this is the screenshot of the uh, the the, the uh, research. And why is that important for you? Because it's very likely that some kind of trauma that is inherited and runs from one generation to another to another influence and your genes and make more likely for you to get endometriosis. So what I find out 
it's very likely that you might experience some early childhood trauma. Any trauma, you know what's that. The, the thing that you don't want to talk about with nobody. It might be sexual trauma. A lot of girls with I work with uh, experience some kind of sexual abuse. You might be a victim of narcissist person. Hello, me, <laughs> me and my mother. And there are another personal traits. You are very likely the neglected child, the child that uh, didn't have their needs met, the child that um, never actually had attention, emotional and physical of the parents. And you, even if you do have them, you feel neglected in maybe emotional kind of way. Uh, you might have the fear of abandonment. That means you literally cling to a relationship that might be toxic, you know, and that's why uh, subconsciously you might attract uh, very uh, toxic men who are literally playing to your trauma because trauma is something that binds us is mean we are looking for the same experience because even if the experience is traumatic when we experience it we know how to cope that's why a lot of uh, people operate through the trauma patterns you might be people pleasing and this is actually the sign of unhealed trauma pleasing other people you might be perfectionist that means it's also people pleasing you know, you've been criticized very often, so you develop the, the thing that you have to be perfect in the things that you do. And I always said that endometriosis is the illness of the girls who were forced to be too strong for too long. And endometriosis give us this break, like it's okay for you now to be weak. It's okay for other people to take care of you now because now you're chronically sick, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of personal traits that need to be healed. Ancestor imprints and trauma that runs in the family. And there's a lot of them, a lot of them around the motherhood. I was doing ancestor healing work when I was trying to get pregnant. And I found out that in my family, one generation after generation, there's so much trauma around the motherhood. Uh, the woman from my family's um, been either losing the babies because uh, I'm from the family that used to be uh, refugees in the times of war. So a lot of children die on the way, you know, didn't make it. And I actually went very deep. I did the meditation and I literally saw, you know, like my ancestors screaming, you know, uh, that they wish they never had those children. They wish they never experienced motherhood just to lose them like this. And all this trauma is literally stored on, you know, cellular level and passed from one generation to another. And that leads to a lot of uh, unfulfilled potential. A lot of women from my family uh, give up everything for the children. And they also, you know, being very intelligent, they, they could be much more, but they ended up at home, you know, they give everything for the children. Like my grandma who raised, you know, uh, three of them, and they, when I was doing this ancestor work, I literally felt the kind of unmet potential and unfulfillment and regret that, you know, they choose this kind of life. And then um, I spoke with my mom about all this ancestor imprints around the motherhood. And my mom told me that, uh, her mother didn't want her because she was a very late child. My grandma I used to have my mom when she was 40. So she was not planned to a child and she didn't really want her. And then my mom didn't really want me because I was uh, the child who was born just straight after the first uh, miscarriage. So my mom wasn't ready for this pregnancy. She, she didn't grieve, you know, uh, from my brother and didn't have enough you know, time to, to actually process what happened. And then that was me straight away. Uh, my sister was not wanted as well. And then I found myself struggling with fertility. And no surprise when there's like literally four generations of women who 
in subconscious level somehow were afraid to have a children. So please talk with your parents, talk with your woman from your family. Is there any, any ancestor imprints, any trauma around the motherhood? Because let's face it, if it is, there's the generation of neglected people uh, who didn't reach their full potential, who were literally stopped from doing something. And the, those people are having children and they're passing their, you know, their sorrow, their traumas to another generation and another generation. If you know what I'm talking about, you are actually the one who has to break the cycle. And if you don't know, then you are not aware of it yet. <laughs> And you are so lucky because when you know, it's really a lot, a lot to carry. I know it's enough to deal with your traumas, not even mention like four generations back and healing their traumas. Healing trauma and ancestor imprints might trigger healing on physical level. I really believe that um, my healing was the combination of many things it wasn't just a diet uh, i also had the therapy you know i also very work with uh, liking my body with developing relationship with my body and sometimes for some woman when you deal with your trauma and you deal with all this ancestor shit it can literally speed up your healing massively so you might think like uh you know what the hell what the hell? So uh, we have to express these emotions somehow. And we have to have what I called organic waste treatment. <laughs> it's basically all these traumas, all this story emotion is like waste, but we cannot dispose it on others. We have to deal with it somehow. I'm not going to be telling you how here because the video is already 12 minutes and I really want to uh, go with this content very quickly. Another thing I want you to know that healing the trauma brings forgiveness, but it doesn't mean just because you forgive somebody, it doesn't mean you are giving this person excuse uh, for hurting you. Uh, I forgive my mom, but it doesn't make uh, any excuses for her. You know, she shouldn't neglect me. She should be better parent. I know that. I know. But I also understand that everyone have a specific journey in this world and we cannot learn the lessons for somebody else. These people have to come to these conclusions by themselves. You cannot, you know, learn it from them. You cannot heal it from them. They have to be aware and they have to know. So my understanding that, for example, for my mom, it might take another two times, you know, coming back to earth to actually grasp this fact. Uh, that gives me this kind of compassion. And, you know, forgiveness. She did the best she could knowing the, the limited amount she knew and know still and having the limited awareness, you know, and by some miracle I evolved and <laughs> I, I'm here and learning more and more. So to wrap it up, basically healthy body is the combination of the healthy spirit and the healthy mind. So I really, really encourage you to look for ancestor healing and check with a woman in your family uh, about any, any imprints that you might carry from one generation to another, because the actually science prove it, uh, that there is the link and there is connection and science epigenetics also prove it that you can influence your genes and you can reverse it. So what is your opinion? Please let me know in comment section below and share with somebody who needs to hear it because maybe this is the missing link for them too. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you next week. Bye.